Just a few words about the song and the video that I released today. Today is September 2nd. And exactly five years ago on, in 2015, on September 2nd, if you remember, there was this picture of the, the child, a Syrian refugee washed off to oh. shores in Turkey. Yeah. And uh, we all saw that on, on every newscast in the world. That, that picture simply devastated me completely, broke my heart. And uh, I, I literally was shouting at the TV. I was crying and shouting at the TV. My husband uh, is used to that <laughs> because <laughs> the atrocities that I see sometimes coming at me from the screen, I'm like, no, no, the world is just wrong. It's wrong. It's doing it wrong. And we need to change something. And um, I, immediately, I immediately wrote the song in sand, Human. Um, I didn't have it. Oh, you're wearing my shirt, Hope. Oh my God, we're all like, I'm wearing the one. Alyssa wearing <laughs> is Hope. Bag. I said the one wow. tote bag. Alyssa's wearing <laughs> Hope. My God, what a collection. You look at us, how beautiful. Um, so I immediately wrote the song Human in Sand. You're a human. Look at the other human being just next to you. They're suffering. Do something about it. Yeah. Uh, little did I know that it will really take me on a journey where I would dedicate a whole album uh, to human solidarity. And this is the album coming out tomorrow. And it's a part of a double album. So the double album is called Human Woman. Tomorrow, the human part is coming out, <laughs> where it includes the song about my father. And of course, the Think of Others uh, song that I released in 2020 is in this album. And the one version that I did in Arabic and some others that, ha that you haven't heard yet. Uh, so that's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> After I've seen that, you know, my whole life was going in that direction of really dedicating myself more and more to these social agendas that I really care about. Because for many years, for many years, those of you who have been following, for many years I've been advocating for all kinds of things and I've been associating myself with organizations that work for coexistence and for, and for women's rights and for human rights and for children's rights and you know, for just equality and human solidarity all over the world. But really, I think this was the point, this song, this child, this picture, it took me on this path of really, of really making my art about a message about something that is bigger than me. And then, of course, I started thinking about a video. And, uh, and I was troubled. I was completely troubled by the photo of the, of the child. And if you've already seen the video, uh, you'll see that the, the picture haunted me still. If you haven't, then the video is on YouTube and it's on, on my Facebook, on both my Facebook. So it's really easy to look it up uh, later and watch it. But what I wanted was to tell this apocalyptic story where the world is ending. We don't, we don't know why, we don't know what it is that is ending the world. We see one character in some, in some dungeon or some basement or uh, um, um, disconnected from a world, but he's a painter and he is obsessively trying to finish a painting while feeling worse and worse all the time. And at the end, these two characters, when he's dead already, two characters come in with machine guns and, and gas masks and we, and we go like, wait, wait, what is going outside? What is going on outside of that basement? And the question, I wanted the question to be in the air. What is it that's going on outside? So in Syria, it was all kinds of gases being gassed on people. And in all kinds of the world, all parts of the world, it's maybe something else. It's just gangs, you know, ruling the streets or, or, or governments. Uh, there are dictatorships, all, all kinds of atrocities happening. Little did I know that after filming the video, we would have a pandemic and we would actually be seeing people coughing and losing their lives and, and in, in, in massive ways. Um, so I really did not have any association to that when we filmed. But now when you watch it, you're going to see this artist coughing his life out of his body. 
and uh, and dying little by little and people with masks coming in and then you go maybe this is the idea so it wasn't on my mind however i think amiram is with us amiram you are allowed to eat with the camera open so i'm inviting you to open your camera and join the discussion sorry i just had to have the uh, shawarma on the way here it's because so, he uh... he was training all day uh, Amiram, uh, aside okay. from being a singer, songwriter, actor, international model, painter, he's also an athlete and a trainer. He's my trainer as well when I'm in Israel. So, yeah, of course, you deserve your shawarma, man. <laughs> so when I uh, wanted to do the video, I came up with this idea of this painter. And of course, uh, one of my best friends is a great painter, Amiram. And I went to him with this idea. And he was gracious enough to uh, come along with the idea. So I don't, I don't know if you saw the video anyway. I'm going to spoil it for those who haven't. Uh, at the end of the video, we discover that the, this mural that this painter was insisting on finishing before his last breath was a, a big uh, painting of that child, of that Syrian refugee washed off the shore. So it was his dying breath wish to kind of document uh, this atrocity and maybe remind us as a reminder or maybe to point a, a, a place where it all started to deteriorate, like really, <laughs> you know, like this started here. <laughs> and um, so I, I opened the mic also for Amiram because not only that he does an amazing uh, acting job there and I was directing him and for me it was a, really it, it was you have to understand we were in a basement in the Tel Aviv central bus station no air <laughs> no air conditioning we were suffocating seriously for real um, a whole day of filming racing against the clock so Amiram was could not break character for almost 10 hours. He actually painted the painting in real time. We were filming in real time him doing the painting. We didn't have many choice, you know, many chances to come back there and shoot it again. No, no, no. We had this one day to do a painting and to shoot a video. So first of all, chapeau, Amiram. As, uh, it was a very interesting challenge, I should say. Yes, but the man, you did it, and, yeah. and I'm so proud of this. I call it a short movie, but uh, I think it's an amazing. Uh, you did an amazing job acting in it, and of course, the amazing painting, which, by the way, still exists in the in the bowels of the of the bus station somewhere. When did which the shoot? It was how it was. Oof! It was before the pandemic, man. Way before. Yeah, so no, two years it was, and something. It was, kind of, it was so interesting to to see it. I saw it first time today as well. And uh, first, it was very hard to disassociate yourself uh, from the character, but it was it was almost like it was um, a premonition. Oh my you god! You know, like it was it was crazy to to watch it. It was like as soon as uh, I had forgot, I had actually forgotten the coughing and I, I, I forgot the, the plot. It was like, yeah. I, and I'd forgotten the song as well because I, I didn't hear the song since then. So um, just the, everything was new, even though, you know, I recognized it was like, oh, we did that, oh, we did that. And it was really powerful, but it was it was the, the craziest part. I was like, I was watching it and I was going like this, is, it's so crazy that this was done pre pandemic right. like right before the pandemic yeah um and then uh, because you cannot not now you cannot watch yeah. it without feeling uh the, the last year and a half to two years of, of experience and and um I, it's powerful but it, it kind of also takes it to another place how was your feeling when i first told you i i would like you to do a painting of a dead child First of all, of course, I remember the image uh, yep. of uh, the orig original image. Um, first thought is, yes, hell yes, I want to do this. Uh, and then the second thought is, can I do this? You know, is, is this something I'll be able to do? But I definitely wanted to be a part of it because I thought it was uh, an important message. 
and uh, and uh, a powerful message. And even more now, when I saw it, it was like, oh, well, it, it was really like I said. It's hard for me to disassociate from from being the character, but when I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm like, there are moments where I forget and I go like, oh wow, this is this is actually really really powerful. Awesome. We were sure that we're not gonna be able to do this in one day, but oh my god, you did it in like one wish. <laughs> you were unstoppable. You were just unstoppable. And I know that uh, you being in the character and in and in front of the camera and and not being the one you know observing for sure your experience is different. Me and Ayal, Ayal is uh, Ayal Isha is the is the my my eternal partner in crime. I call him. He produces my music with me, and he shot the video. So Ayal and I had the privilege of watching you within that thing. I'm sure for you it's a a, a, a haze. <laughs> of something yeah <laughs> but uh, amazing yeah. guys i want you to ask questions uh, this is a conversation we are limited on time so i would like you to just jump in and say something or ask something because it's exactly the time um amira i was yeah. uh just totally taken aback uh when i watched it last night it was it was amazing and amira um, uh, you're your acting, your your job was fantastic. It really was. Um, it's you. interesting, though. I didn't see the character die. I just saw a person uh, like raging about the uh, outside again. The idea of being in those little hallways, in those rooms, trapped in all of the different places a mind can go. And of course, I I am aware now that you've said about what the date is, why it's so important. But for me, just seeing it last night and not really understanding all of that, um, it almost, it was a parallel to what's happening yesterday. We had m big protests in, in British Columbia here over wearing masks and, and no yeah. vaccines. Yeah, all of yeah, the yeah. places a, a mind can go when we don't have the human contact. We we are all in these little, uh, this underground area. Wow. I was just blown away, Mir. It was fantastic. Wow. And, wow. and then, Thank of you. course, seeing the picture resolve at the end of what what you were what the those two uh, observers were seeing again i didn't see him dead as just uh, devolved into despair but there was and then the picture was like oh wow there was something else that he was trying to be coherent about and couldn't mm -hmm. it was just fantastic but that was just my take on it amazing <laughs> thank you thank you wow thank you so much it's always interesting to hear how how people <laughs> perceive what you what the work that you do. So it's very interesting. Thank you so much. The pandemic has shown us how the sausage is made politically, and uh, uh, I think it's society societally as well. And it's, it's very very scary. I think um, I think we got to be very careful as people right now. Um, aye, aye, aye. Um, it, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. uh, but this is the time to make art you know this is the time to make art and this is the time to warn people through art when i think what the things that inspire me the most are then it's usually human beings doing amazing things and when i think what the things that really scare me the most or are the most horrible in the world is usually also things that humans do it do humans do it's never the natural disasters you know, tsunami is not evil. It just happens. But people can be evil, can be bad, can do, a, wow, can do such harm to each other and not see the harm that they make. So I'm always like, you know, balancing between uh, the, uh, being inspired by the beautiful things done by humanity and, and being appalled by the ugly things being done by humanity and always trying to strive to remind us that we can do better. We can always do better. <laughs> I mean, I know I wrote this some, somewhere, I think yesterday. Um, I, I don't expect us to always be aware every moment of our day of every suffering on the globe. I, we cannot, it's not humanly possible, but I ask us to stop sometimes, take a minute 
and remind ourselves of the things that are happening and maybe do something about them. So I always say, you know, there are so many, so many actions already happening because a lot of people ask me, what should I do? I don't know what to do. I want to do something, but I don't know what. And I'm like, you know what? You don't, you don't have to come up with anything. Just look up an organization and you have money. Great. Give them money. You have uh, uh, time. Great. Volunteer your time. You have neither share the button, the share button. You know, it's amazing when you share and show your your family and your friends that somebody is doing something worthwhile and worth supporting. And maybe they have the money or they have the time or they can also press share. This is amazing help that you can do immediately on the spot. This is what keeps me going. The little thing that I can do because I cannot change the world. None of us can change the world. I mean, I hope you can. If you can, wow, I'm with you, man. <laughs> I know I can't uh, with my little life and my little voice and my little things that I do. But I try to remind us that there are little things, just the little buttons that we can push and change just a little thing in our life, which maybe can have some impact somewhere. Um, you would be surprised how loud your voice actually is, Mira. From the moment I saw your TED talk, it, oh. it basically has changed my life uh, to, again, think about what you've just said about being in the moment and taking a moment during the day to think a positive thing or, or to be empathetic about to someone who may be suffering. So no, you've made great changes. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Ah, that's, uh, that's, you see, I can go to sleep uh, peacefully tonight, <laughs> knowing that I did so. <laughs> I watched the video clip, not with my whole attention, because I was listening, but it's very troubling, like I saw yeah. the images. <laughs> um, can you say a little bit, like, now you made the session to explain or to, to tell the story, but the people who will watch it, or what do you hope to... To communicate by that by the troubling yeah you know it's very hard when you when you put out art out there and, and it doesn't have a booklet okay of course it has the description on youtube it has the, the post has some words but not always people like go delve into the depths of it and it's very frustrating i have to tell you as an artist who who tries to say something with art it's very frustrated but but um but you but the way i i the way i deal with it is that i'm loyal to whatever artistic taste or artistic statement that i have this is what i came up with this is my imprint you know it could be good it could be bad it depends you know on on your taste right um, some people will watch it and say, oh, that's troubling and skip. And some people might be intrigued to, uh, you know, think or to ask like, wait, 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 there's a story behind this. Maybe I should read <laughs> the description. And then the description might, you know, lead them to more and more places. I don't know, to discover me as an artist and to discover what I'm doing, to discover Amira as an artist. You never know the chain of effect, but when you put out art, you cannot say everything with it. A piece of art cannot say everything. It says one thing, maybe two, if you're lucky, and maybe clearly, not always, because art is not explicit. It is an artistic expression. So it's not an explicit, you know, it's not like me now explicitly telling you what I'm thinking. No, art is like some kind of a mirage way of depicting, you know, <laughs> very uh, artistic. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's the frustration when it comes to how much will people understand? How much will people really delve into every shot and what I've chosen there and what the actor is doing and the song. And in the song, by the way, you hear it begins with the word for word, the news report that I heard that day. Good evening. It's rare that we have to warn you right from the top of the newscast about what you're about to see. But the photo we're going to show you. Uh, because they had to warn people before they put the photo on the screen. 
So I put that in and I put two uh, sound bites from videos I've seen of, of Syrian refugees on YouTube. So one is of a child calling my brothers because his brothers has, have perished uh, under a, a, a building. And another man calling to the reporter, shouting at him, we are human, look at us, we are human. And I took that bit, the sound bite as well from that man. So I don't know how much people are gonna go into it. And the music is quite different from what I usually do. There was something in it more violent, more aggressive, more screechy, you know, scratchy. I wanted it to scratch something. And, and then of course you take the risk of it not being as pleasant <laughs> and it's being disturbing and the imaging being disturbing and not so pleasant for the eye. Um, but I think I've passed the, 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 the place, the stage in my life where I'm trying to please. So um, I love art. I am an artist. Doesn't matter where I choose to take my art right now, okay? So I've been concentrating on my online store. That's also art for me, where I design my little, uh, you know, I call them human billboard, uh, <laughs> human billboards. I'm making us into billboards with these positive messages that I'm hoping to <laughs> spread it to the world and putting money into an educational uh, program that I really believe in. So. Everything that I'm going to do is about not, it's not about pleasing. It's about doing something that has some significant and significance and meaning for me in order to wake up in the morning and feel like I did my share. I did the little thing that I could. I pushed the one button that I have in my possession and I tried to do something with that. I am a, a just, again, blown away by your positive activism. And uh, um, MRM, um, uh, thank you again for uh, being uh, a part of Mira's work, of your work, and sharing it with us. And, and just, again, how, how daring it is to be an activist and, and to put yourself out there. So again, thank you both very, very much. And thank I look you, forward Karen. to seeing more of your art, Mira. More, thank more, you. more. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. And look up Amiram. I did a few videos for his latest songs. You have to watch them. Um, very nice videos. Very nice videos. Of course, I made them. Very nice videos. <laughs> Anyway, guys, just before Zoom cuts this off, I love you all. Thank you for coming. Uh, this was, for me, this was amazing to, to, you know, to get in touch like this. Thank you, Amiram. I have no words for the amazingness of you, you gorgeous man. Mwah. Okay, guys, uh, mm. see you whenever I see you. I hope we do this more. Bye-bye, everyone.